Well, you look at the burned over district in Upper State New York. You have Mormonism, mm-hmm. Adventism, in Disciples of Christ, uh, Campbellites, mm-hmm. Church of Christ, all the Restorations movement. All of that stuff comes out of the same region because, as Mike just points out, the the damage has been done. People are are left with despair and hopelessness and so on. So you offer them a millennial kingdom and all of that. Mm-hmm. I would suggest that today's burned over district is evident in the fact that so much of evangelical uh, radio, mm-hmm. so much of evangelical teaching and preaching has been taken over by psychotherapy. Uh-huh. A Pentecostal friend was telling me that one of the things that they're facing now is burnout, that that Pentecostalism is going through a phase of burnout now. Mm. Where surprise, surprise. Many people uh, are, are I, I asked him, in fact, I says, where are people going? Right. Are they are they going uh, to other churches or what's hmm. happening? They're going to unbelief. That's what he said. Yep. Hmm. He says that's the the greatest frustration is he says they're going to atheism. They're going to hardcore mm-hmm. cynicism yeah, about yeah. Christianity, and I, I'm not a bit surprised. No. no, and a lot of it comes through psychotherapy. These people yeah. go to have a have a psychotherapist give them an absolution and. An unbelieving psychotherapist is going to say the problem is what you've been taught. Right. Yeah. Don't believe that anymore. And they don't, and, and that's the result. Yeah. Well, we talk about the connection between Finney and Kant, but I, I can't help getting, getting over the connection between Finney and Wesley. And, I mean, when you when you put the two together, you end up with American Pentecostalism, and we do have new things that are being offered. It's called Toronto Blessing. It's right. called Brownsville. We end up with these revival and these, and, and all in the name of getting people to Christ, Harvest Crusades and the mm-hmm. like, getting people to Christ, but people are coming to a Christ that has not met the yeah. standard of God's yeah. law Great. for Can't them. Point. Great. And, and, and it's at that, that is the altar uh, uh, at which Finney yep. marries Wesley. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Very nice, Ken. And then at that point, what is the difference between liberalism and evangelicalism? Well, the difference with classic liberalism and contemporary evangelicalism is classic liberalism sneered at the supernatural elements in Scripture. They sneered at inspiration. Mm-hmm. No one who, mm-hmm. as an education, can believe in a virgin birth or right. resurrection from the dead and things like that. Our age is so bloody superstitious. Yeah. That we don't have that problem. We don't have the cold rationalism that says those things can't happen. Right. We'll believe our, anything. Yeah, our we're belief now says, yeah, our belief age now says we'll believe anything, and as long as you've experienced Jesus' resurrection, so what, whether it happened or not. J. Gresham Machen fought this in liberalism, but it could be this could be an argument. Every argument he issues against Harry Emerson Fosdick and other uh, evangelical liberals um, at the in the early part of the 20th century could be hurled today at... Uh, at us. Machen says, many men have jumped to the conclusion that the Christian experience is all that's necessary. Having a present experience of Christ in the heart, may we not, it is said, hold that experience no matter what history may tell us as to the events of the first Easter morning, no matter what sort of man history may tell us Jesus of Nazareth actually was, no matter what history may say about the real meaning of his death or about the story of his alleged resurrection. May we not continue to experience the presence of Christ in our souls? The trouble is that the experience thus maintained is not Christian experience. Mm -hmm. Religious Mm -hmm. experience it may well be, but Christian experience it certainly is not. For Christian experience depends absolutely upon an event. Mm. We should all pray at least weekly for God's gift (laughs) of another mage and to us. Really? Clarity. Clarity. Well, folks, not only did the revivalist abandon the material principle of the Reformation, justification, making him a renegade against evangelical Christianity, he repudiated doctrines such as original sin and the substitutionary atonement that have been embraced by Roman Catholics and Protestants in common. Therefore, Charles Finney isn't an Arminian, he's a Pelagian. He is not only an enemy of evangelical Protestantism, but of historic Christianity of the broadest sort. We don't point out these things with relish, just to cheerfully denounce heroes of American evangelicals. But it's always best, when one has lost something valuable, to retrace one's steps in order to determine when and where one last had it in his or her possession. That's the purpose of this exercise, to face with some honesty, for once maybe, the serious departure from biblical Christianity that has occurred through American revivalism. Because until we address this shift, we will perpetuate a distorted and dangerous course. Of one thing, Charles Finney was absolutely correct. 
the gospel held by the Westminster divines, whom he attacked so directly, and indeed held by the whole company of evangelicals down through the ages, is another gospel from the one that he proclaimed. The question of our moment is which gospel will we preach and which gospel will determine our liturgy, our worship, our evangelism, and our style. Thanks for listening to the White Horse Inn this week. Help support our work by signing up as an innkeeper and you'll receive the White Horse Inn broadcasts on two CDs each month along with a subscription to our magazine, Modern Reformation. Sign up at the architect or reformer levels and you'll receive the extended edition of every program plus bonus interviews, lectures, and broadcasts on four CDs each month. The number to call is 1-800-890-7556. That's 1-800-890-7556 or head to our website, whitehorseinn.org. That's whitehorseinn.org. If you're new to the program, please sign our online guest book, and we'll send you a free CD and sample copy of our magazine. We'll see you next time on The White Horse Inn.